Blog Talk Radio. When it came to treating the citizens of African descent fairly, America failed. She put them in chains. The government put them on slave quarters, put them on action block, auction blocks, put them in cotton fields, put them in inferior schools, put them in substandard housing, put them in scientific experience, experiments, put them in the lowest paying jobs, put them outside the equal protection of the law, kept them out of their racist bastions of higher education and lock them into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. That's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. God damn America. As long as she tries to act like she is God and she is supreme. What's peace without justice? They murdered our families and still walking amongst us. They brainwashed our children so they wouldn't trust us. You see how we live in man, they want to crush us. The glamour and starts us. That don't impress me. So show me your world where the cops won't arrest me. For telling the truth from out here where the test be. Be fighting the holy war the most high blessed me and gave me the strength to tell you before they murdered me. You say cash lose everything. They control currency. They sign away your rights. They do it like perjury. They put you in poverty. This is like burglary. We coming to a crossroad. We need more support. It's the beginning of the end of that new world order. We coming to a crossroad. We need more support. So let's remember your shire and do what he taught us. Yo. They black water, we soldiers for the call. Fighting dictating blood suckers of the poor. Eliminate stolen cross bone, take them all. Our people too strong, but we would never fall. They black water, we soldiers for the call. Fighting dictating blood suckers of the poor. Eliminate stolen cross bone, this is war. The most high sweetest us, man, we would never fall. In this cold world, my Bible close to hand. I had a dream that I was in my homeland I want to live righteous, a worthy man How can you take a life, someone close to him? I feed you the truth, but you say it's bland Devil let loose, with a heartless plan Opportunity come knocking in the door with slam Shoot about the ride, out the lion's den Bills overdue, chest owing dead First one at work, still no respect Esau be the end, Jacob got next I send my prayers out to the outermost You got hope, you don't have to mope You let astray what your past just quote My soul more precious than the bag of gold Searching for correction, reapproved Modern day slavery, jail institute They black water, we soldiers for the call Fighting dictating blood suckers of the poor Even if we 
Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is a broadcast by Awakened Nation. Uh, a lot of you are affiliated with us on Facebook. We're going to go to our host in just a few seconds. Just want to put a few things out there. Uh, this topic of this show is called Hebrew Israelites Occupy the United Nations. So we're going to really get in deep as time approaches of April 2nd about what we're trying to accomplish and the support that we need from our people, the so-called african American that's inside this country today, along with the other minorities or so-called minorities. We're going to let our uh, host come in, Akash Rash. Shalom, Aki. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here, but uh, I'm, I'm here, and uh, I'm here, still hearing you uh, talking, uh, introducing me. Um, Your internet connection might be slow where you're at, so just let it pass and then you know proceed. I'm hearing you talk right now, and I'm still hearing you uh, bring saying uh, in just a minute we'll bring in Aki's Barrage and. You're probably getting a delay because you're not in this. Yeah, I'm. I'm hearing you uh, talk. Uh, there's a delay. We're going to bring a host back, and we just said he's having some te- technical difficulties. So we're going to bring him in in about a few a few seconds. So just give us give us a few moments. But the main thing is that um, a lot of our people that's on Facebook, they've been you know been dealing with us for the last few months, seeing the progress that we made going through the White House. And um, everybody's excited about going to the UN, UN but they're not knowing what uh, exactly that we're trying to accomplish. Most of us don't. So the thing is that all of our people have to have to show up. All our people have to stand tall together as a nation. And a lot of our brothers is ready. If you're looking at anything regarding the Semitic community or any of our brothers doing lectures as of recently out of New York, brothers is, uh, is gathering together. That same spirit that's on us is on them. The same thing when we went to the conference in um, Washington, D.C., the gathering of the elders. This was the main purpose of that particular uh, meeting, was that all our people were gathered together. So once we're gathered, what are we doing after that? We all know that the laws in this country are against us, and that's something that we face within this country every day. Like it says in Lamentations chapter 4, we're going to verse 17. Lamentations chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 17. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Like I said, our host will be in one second. Let's give him a couple seconds. One thing about Israel, we have to be patient. Lamentations chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 17. We're going to read down to verse 21. And it reads, as for us, our eyes have just fell for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. One of the main things that plague us here in America this day is that we are depending on those who are oppressing us to save us. We're asking them to, to, to yield their hand from, from choking us. We're saying lift your foot up from uh, stomping our necks. We're saying uh, stop putting the handcuffs on. Stop locking us up. Stop putting us in the lowest economic condition, and they're not cooperating because Scripture says they will not cooperate. So it's up to us to stand up as a nation. It's up to us to to have a part in our own deliverance. Even when a man reads the will and testament, he goes to that will and testament. When a man is given an inheritance, he has to go to his own inheritance. And it's the same thing that it reads in Second Ezra, the 17th and the 7th chapter. And we'll have to take a look at that. So one of the main things our people are going through right now is that we believe we don't have to move. We believe that we should we have to wait on Hamashiach or Christ to come to America to pick us up from here. And that's that's not scripturally accurate that that's going to happen. All the great men of the Bible have moved by faith. 
What did James say? He said, show me uh, thy works and I'll show you my, my works by my faith. I'm paraphrasing. So everything we have to do, has to, we have to move according to the faith the Most High has put in us. And this is going to require that we make, make a stand. Now, we've taught for years inside our own homes. We've taught for years on YouTube and we've taught on the different social media forums, but even that's going to come to an end soon. A lot of these things are going to be censored and taken away. What is the Net Neutrality Act? And the Net Neutrality Act, a lot of things that you can post or regards to well, the First Amendment of free speech, you're no longer going to have that right. You're not going to be able to just open your mouth as you see fit. So before we be able to point out people and say, okay, this, this brother must be a um, 501c3 affiliate because he's able to take donations, he's able to say certain things, and um, you know he's doing it at, liberally or freely. Now we're at a time now where the censoring of what you say online, if they deem it to be a trouble or a uh, problem to whatever the, or, uh, the organization is or the institution is or whatever the government is saying, if they deem what you're saying is contradictive or counterproductive, now they have a right to censor you. So you won't be able to just say what you want to say. You won't be able to push the message that we're the people of the Bible the way we have been doing. You won't be able to really put the truth out there because if they're watching and they're waiting for you to say certain things to say, okay, I'm pulling that, that's what direction we're going in. So off of the vision from the Holy Spirit or the Ruach, we have brothers do receive vision. Brothers do receive dreams. That's what the scripture says, Joel, the second chapter. So brothers say we believe and we have faith that the Most High does these things through men, through women, through the different vessels that he chooses to use. But when a brother does have a vision or a dream, the first thing we do is we scream foul. We say, no, nah, that, that can't be possible. The Most High is doing that. You know, but the scripture says when there is no vision, the people perish. So the Most High is always giving us something to move or to lay back. The Most High is always making sure that his people, like it says in uh, Amos, the third chapter, the most I do anything, he'll reveal it unto his prophet. So when you get word and you discern the truth, you can see what message the most High is sending out to his people. Our host is back there. We're going to try to get him back on here and see if his mic is, is uh, working properly. Brother, can you hear me? You there? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I, I can hear you. Um, the I just want to, um, okay, they warmed up, all right? <laughs> great, great job, uh, great job. I know I can depend on you, brother. Okay, I just want to say I am Akish Faraj of the tribe of Judah, and I am uh, bring, uh, bringing you this emergency announcement. Hear me, my people. There are many facts and issues that need, to re uh, that need resolution. And reclamation within the minds of our true sovereign Hebrew Israelite nation, including but not limited to self determination, knowledge of self, nationality, silver and gold, and our land must be at the top of the list. We as sovereign Hebrew Israelites must continue to provide our Israelite families, so called African Americans, Negroes, Blacks, colors, etc., with proper spiritual information, instructions, and enlightened state of mind in order to overstand what has happened in order to reclaim our knowledge of self, true nationalities, status, silver, gold, and pedigrees, pedigree, ancestry, and our land. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4 says, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. And speaking of the nations, Psalms chapter 83, verse 3 through 5 says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, 
They are confederate against thee. We must reattach. You still with me? Uh, hello? Yeah, I'm with you, brother. I'm just calling brother. I'm just calling brother Keon in so he can get that information on the on the land of Israel. So you know, if you hear me in the, okay, working in the right. background, that's all I'm doing. I'm here. All right, okay. We must attach ourselves back to our Most High God, our nationality, our arts, our culture, our laws, and our land. This reclamation of our birthrights and heritage must begin with the conscience, national and international reclamation of our of one's self, the self-determined family members of sovereign Hebrew Israelites, and the Most High shall have mercy on us. Second, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, we know, uh, we now know who we are. We now know who we are. And know what happened to our, uh, our sovereign Hebrew Israelite family identity. The most high silver, gold in our land. We are learning how the Romans, the U.S. government, and their laws are set up to control to control us, our resources, and our land. John chapter 14, verse 26, prophecy confirms this when Mishiach said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things that bring all things to your remembrance. That's what's happening right now. That's what we're going through right now. Everything is coming back to us because we're starting to know who we are. We must collectively come together as sovereign Hebrew Israelite, as a sovereign Hebrew Israelite nation to be internationally recognized in order to beat the Romans at their own games and to make them adhere to their national and international laws that have been put in place for us to regain our nationality, our silver, our gold, and our land, our freedom, and to secure our protection can do this by assembling peacefully in mass numbers at the United Nations as dual nationals with our royal Hebrew Israelite national flag and the American flag amongst the flags of all the nations. This has been stated in the vision given to me by the Holy Spirit that we shall bring charges against them on an international platform for the murder, for the rape, and the and uh, the stolen identity, our stolen identity. This is also confirmed in prophecy, which uh, in which Judah shall play a major part in bringing the nations together on behalf of the Most High. Joel chapter three verse one through two prophecy says, "For behold, in those days, and in that time, will I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also." And bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now we're that we're, we're talking about spiritual Jehoshaphat, just like any other thing that's spiritual, like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Babylon, uh, Babylon, uh, ain't, uh, New Egypt. And I will plead with them, therefore, therefore, my people, and for my heritage, Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted and, and uh, parted my land. We don't have to join any group in order to, to declare our nationality. Many of, many of our, many of us through the declaration of sovereign Hebrew Israelite American national status to the world document have declared our nationality that now only needs to be, to be enforced. We need many more to download and sign the declaration to bring them uh, to bring with them on April the 2nd to the uh, United Nations. We must understand that this is an international right according to the Convention on the Rights of Child, Article 7 and 8. All children have a right to choose and preserve their nationality. Every nation signed off on the Convention except the, for the United States. And some, uh, some, 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 uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. What is it? Somali, S O M A I L I, 
Somali, Somali, I'm sorry, Somali, that's Somali. The United States didn't sign off on the convention on the rights of the child because they have created a faction, a fiction called U.S. citizen, which are so-called African-Americans, blacks, Negroes, colors, etc., that allows them to continue to control their chattel property, which is us. Uh, if we continue to say that we're African Americans, black colors, uh, Negroes, yeah, we're still slaves. That's why we must come out of her. That allows them to continue to control their chattel property. They continue to break. Uh, they continue to break international laws and division. International laws apply to nations, not individuals. This is why I put emphasis on everybody uh, signing the, uh, the declaration, and we doing this as a nation. We will never be able to do this individually because they will always have you in their jurisdiction and you doing what they want you to do, and you still will be considered a slave, not sovereign. So it is important for us to come together to do this. We were never meant to be citizens of the United States as pre Dred Scott versus Stanford, 1857. The, the Supreme Court of the United States in Dred Scott versus Stanford, 1857, held that Negro slaves are, are free. <laughs> Did you hear that? Negro slaves are free. We're not included and were not intended to be included in the category of citizen, as the word was used in the United States Constitution. Therefore, based on these facts of the established law of the land and said territories, the, the free sovereign Hebrew Israelites were not included and were not intended to be included as citizens, subjects of the Union States' rights republic. Resultingly, the sovereign Hebrew Israelites were excluded from the Union States rights a jurisdiction. We must also understand that the Constitution was and is a tool that was and should be used to protect our inalienable rights that are un, unable to be taken away, given away by we sovereign Hebrew Israelites against the government tyranny. In order to fully understand nationality, one must also understand sovereignty. Sovereignty is the supreme political authority and self-sufficiency of a nation of people to govern their in internal affairs without interference or dictation from a foreign government. The United States is a foreign government to this land mass called North America. This My brings brother, us full circle to... Go ahead, brother. I just wanted to elaborate. I just wanted to add something extra to what you just said. Now, this is Black's Law Dictionary, uh, fourth edition, 1957. So this is one of the versions before they started to change a lot of things. And this is what has happened with us. And this is what the brother is touching on regarding us giving up our sovereignty, giving up our, our so-called rights, our sovereign rights. Black's Law Dictionary, we have a word called seso. Now, seso is part of the word session. It says, a session, a giving up or relinquish, a surrender, an assignment. Now, I'm going to go down to in the civil law. Now, this is seso in the civil law. The act of ceding, a yielding or giving up, surrender or relinquish of property or rights. So that's what we're doing with our own people. We're actually giving them a session. This is uh, this is the definite this is the word and how it's defined within the Black's Law Dictionary. We're actually ceding or yielding up or giving up or surrendering relinquishment or property or rights. That's what we're giving up. Now in the terms of civil law, it says an assignment, the act by which a party transfers property to another, the surrender of the assignment of property for the benefit of one's creditors. And the ecclesiastical law says a giving a benefit or benefit by accepting another sensation giving up but not in the benefits that they have given us but our sovereign benefits we have been give, turning it over to them willingly but unknowingly I just wanted to put that out there brother okay great job great job great job um, 
uh, as he was saying, um, civil civil law. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm just going to touch on that for a moment. Civil law, uh, and then I'll get back to what I was saying. But civil law, there's a difference between common law and civil law. Civil law is something that they have created for themselves. Civil law is what makes so-called African Americans, so-called Negroes, so-called Blacks, so-called uh, colored people uh, slaves. That means that you're 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 not sovereign under civil law. That means that that civil law gives them a right to to murder our people and get away with it with impunity because because right now we're if you're considering yourself an African American, a so-called African American, you're you're uh you're 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 requesting benefits from a government which you must play pay the price for. And that includes uh being murdered. Uh, and and them saying, you know what, it's justified homicide. So this is why it is it is imperative that we come out of this false identity. It's very imperative, but many of our people think that is it, that that's what they are, and and that's who they are, and and it's a false, it's false, it's it's a fraud, it's fraud. Uh, so the difference between common law and civil law is a big difference. Uh, it's, just, it's it's so big that it's different, just like um, um, uh, lawful and legal. Legal goes hand in hand with civil law because neither one of them is real law. Lawful goes hand in hand with common law. That's the real, that's the law of the land. Lawful means that as long as you don't hurt no one, you can do anything you want to do. Legal means that we, they don't care. They, they'll put and say that you hurt the government, the, uh, the state that you're in. They, they'll say that the state is the victim. See, uh, in order for there to be a crime, there must be a victim. That means that there must be a human, live, breathing victim. The state is not a live, breathing victim. So when they say they bring in charge against you, the state has brought charges against you. That means a fiction brought a charge against you. A, a fiction brought a charge against another fiction, which is an African-American that doesn't exist. A fiction that doesn't exist brought a charge against another fiction that does not exist. But you exist. So in order to exist, to, 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 exist, to, uh, to, to uh, physically exist, well, you must be in your proper status which is sovereign Hebrew Israelite, which is a sovereign Hebrew Israelite. And that's what we're doing. That's what the declaration is for. Now, back to what I was saying, this brings us full circle to international law that I spoke to you earlier about. This would include the internal affairs, the making of laws, executing or applying the law, making war or peace, forming treaties of alliance, entering into commerce with foreign nations, and the like. The sovereignty of a nation of people is tied to their birthrights. You hear that? Tied to your birthrights. And you know what you did when, you know what you do every time you have a child? You know what your parents did? Every time you sign a birth certificate, you sign in over your rights to the government. You're, you're signing your rights over to the government. And you're making your children a ward of the state. And that's why they could come in and take your children when they think that you're mistreating them, even though if you try to spank your children or whoop your children, like the Bible says, spare the rods for the child. They took that away from you. Now they're letting your kids get away with anything, any and anything and holding you responsible for whatever they do. How can you, how you, how can you tell me not to, not to discipline them? And when they do something wrong, you coming at me. Because they did something wrong. It doesn't make sense. This, this, this is not where we're supposed to be. This is not our law. This is not our place. And they do not supposed to be ruling over us. Point blank. It's just that simple. Now, the sovereign nation of a people is tied to their birthrights. Birthrights are national, uh, nationals, unalienable rights, which can't be taken away by anyone and are lawfully, not, like, not legally, recognized at birth by the international governments. The sovereignty of a nation is lawfully recognized by their nationality. Family, pedigrees, means, means ancestry. Political status, constitution, flag, and seal. These national symbols, when public, public, publicly, publicly declared, publicly declared, when constantly used in public, 
and when registered with the government of the earth, particularly with the sovereign nation in which a people live or visit, allows a nation of people to be lawfully recognized by the international body, thereby receiving international protection at law. See, this is what this is another reason why we're going to the United Nations. We're going, we we are 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 able to everyone has a right to a nationality. And this so says the uh United Nations on their webpage, on their wor- uh website. That everyone sh- no one shall be arbitrarily uh denied to to uh to uh deny the right to a nationality or to change their nationality. See? And that's what we we we're going to enforce. We're not going into any closed courtroom where they can take control and 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 take jurisdiction over you, and, and no one else knows it. No, we're going to do this in the open. On the other hand, when a nation of people birthrights are usurped, are denied, they are no longer sovereign. As a re- as a result, the enslaved people will no longer receive international protection at law. See, this is why we're being murdered with impunity. Because we have no protection, we have no protection. Everybody, um, our people believe that they are attached to a land. Being so-called African American, Negroes, Black, colors, etc., you don't exist, and you wonder why they are killing our people with impunity. Because of that, as a result of enslaved people, will will no longer receive international protection at, of, at law. Thus, slavery and enslavement, enslavement by a foreign government, good old USA, <laughs> the land of the free and home of the slave. This is what has happened to the sovereign Hebrew Israelite family around the globe. Nationality arises at birth and is connected synonymously with and particularly with a, a parentage or a family name or pedigree, pedigree and land. This nationality and name arises at birth, coming from the world nativity, from the word nativity, which means to be born, and is the heredity, her- her- genetic birth line of, my, of any people of the same uh, parentage. Nationality lawfully bound uh, any people of the same. Nationality determines the political and social status, position, or rank in any society. Nationality is distinguished between the indigenous, sovereign, national, and foreign nations, and all aliens and all sovereign, sovereign nations. Nationality determines who has all the rights and privilege, privileges to all of the resources and benefits of their sovereign nation. The land of, of, of a sovereign people is their heritage. Heritage is the tangible substance that is owned and paused by right, through inheritance, birthright. It is passed down through generations and is paused and titled in the family's name. National land is protected and maintained with the knowledge of the people's birthright. We are the internationally, we are the internationally protected persons talked about in, uh, and, in and defined under Title 18, USC Section 11 defines foreign governments. Section 112 discusses protection of foreign officials, official guests, and internationally protected persons. Section 878 talks about treats and extortion against foreign officials, official guests, and internationally protected persons. Section uh, Section 1116B, 4B, may not be charged nor held with penalties provided under Title 18 U.S.C. The term foreign government, as used in section, includes any government, sovereign Hebrew Israelite, faction, or body of insurgents within a country with which the United States is at peace, irrespective of uh, by the United States. Once we understand that we are an indigenous, internationally protected people and understand that we must collectively come together as sovereign Hebrew Israelites of the 12 tribes of Israel and a nation internationally recognized in order to be on games and to make them adhere to their national and international laws that have been put in place for us to regain our land, our freedom, and for our protection. 
That's how we gain our nationality collectively. Peace and freedom exist in nature, yet men and nations have broken the peace and enslaved all other women, men, and nations, thus stealing resources and land, robbing and hindering the freedom of other women and men and nations by force of false law, murder, threat, duress, slander, and everything that harms. Fairy tales are for those who cannot face reality. Facts are for those who have the courage to, to face truth. Nationality is for those who honor their mothers and fathers. And the nationality is the birthright and sovereignty. Birthrights and sovereignty are for those who love freedom and justice, knowing what it means at law. Peace is for those who live the law. The law of the land is the circle of life. One to the north, one to the south, one to the east, and one to the west, standing as the great law of peace. We move forward as a nation of sovereign Hebrew Israelite American nationals to stand continuously in front of the United Nations in New York until all of our demands as a nation of Hebrew Israelites are met. I want you all to understand that April the 2nd, 2015, March to Exodus and pilgrimage to Zion and thereafter is of a great significance, spiritual and prophetic. Here's why. On March the 20th, 2015, will be the first day of Jubilee. March the 27th, 2015 is Sabbath. April the 2nd, 2015, we march to Exodus. On and to occupy, uh, to uh, to stand in front of the United United Nations in New York, and pilgrimage to Zion, then the Passover, the Blood Moon, the Day of the Most High. Joel chapter two verse thirty one prophecy says, "Sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Most High come." And everyone who calls on the name of the Most High will be saved. For on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Most High has said, even among the survivors whom the Most High calls. Acts chapter 20, verse 20, prophecy says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Most High come. And it shall come to pass that so whoever shall call on the name of the Most High shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear this words. Yeshia, Yeshia, ones who call, the, many who call Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of a higher God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which Ahia did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 prophecy says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Which, as I stated previously, brings us to the United Nations, spoken of in the prophecy of Joel, chapter 3, verse 2, which says, For behold, in those days, and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah. See, Judah is the main tribe. The scripture says, he says, I shall save the, the descendants of Judah first. So Judah is the main focus. Judah is in charge. Judah uh, leads the, the charge in this, in this uh, second exodus. And it says, for behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah in Jerusalem, I will also gather all the nations. Well, that's where we're going, where all the nations are located and in this area anyway. You know, we know the United Nations is located all over the world. But in this location where the main uh, main branch of Judah is located is in New York. And I want you to uh, uh, you all to understand that New York, the, the United Nations, the land that the United Nations is in New York does not belong to the United States. It's called it's a neutral land. It's a neutral territory. Yeah, that's right. It don't belong to the United States. So we'll, we will be on neutral territory. And then that, that's great protection because that's what we're going there for. We're going there for protection and for other things. However, uh, continuing with Joel, 
Joel said, I will also gather all the nations, and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them. And the Most High saying he's going to plead with the nations. You know how he's going to plead with the nations? He's going to plead with the nations through his people. We are going to the United Nations and declaring our true Hebrew Israelite American national status. We want to get in our proper proper status. We want to get we want our, our identity back. Period. And I will also gather all the nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. I want you all to understand that Moses of the tribe Levi was given the power from the Most High through his rod to help Exodus our people. They didn't worry about how to use this staff. They just wanted out of uh, Egypt bondage. Just like Moses had power through the Declaration of Sovereign Hebrew Israelite American National Status to the world document to help exit our people. Understand, my people, that it would take a lifetime to try and uh, try to understand the power of this document. There is no training. You shall see the power of this declaration through the Most High through me and shall learn from it as we go. There are thousands of Hebrew Israelites, so-called African-Americans, Negroes, Black colors, etc., waking up to your true Hebrew Israelite nationality, and only one of me. Could you imagine me trying to train thousands of upon thousands of, of you Hebrew Israelites, everything, uh, everything about this document, and you trying to defend yourself with it individually? It's not going to work individually. We must do this together and collectively as a nation. Understand this, my people, whether you like it or not, I am your rep, I am your, our nation representative similar to Moses. The, the difference is I am Akish Viraj of the tribe Judah, and the Most High gives me my power through law, as prophesied in Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 through 10, that says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shalak comes. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, meaning I'm Mishiach. I'm not the Mishiach. I'm just here to do my part of the script. Everybody has a part of the script to play. The issue is this, my people. I don't work for the government or any corporation. I work totally for the Most High and you, my people, and those that follow us in truth. In order for me to protect and support you and the rest of our people by enforcing and demanding, including but not limited to our nationality, the return of our silver, our gold, the return of our land, you must be willing to support me in supporting you. In doing so, one day you will not have to work for this government either. However, that one day must be able to come. It's on the horizon. Make no mistake, I'm not asking to get rich by no means, but only to be able to continue to help you that must be willing to help me. I give to you what the Most High gives to me, Be'ashem, Yeshaya, HaMessiah, and Ruach, Holy Spirit. However, you must be willing to give back. A workman is worthy of his hire, as uh, as uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18 says. For the, sept for the scripture says, thou shalt not muzzle the ox, that threaded of the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. If I have no way to continue to work the Declaration of Sovereign Hebrew Israelite American National Status to the world document means nothing and is useless to you and foreign to you. Thus, it is imperative that you go to www.marchexodus.com, make a donation of $25, $50, dollars or more toward the cause to show your appreciation. With that having been said, let us go forward to April the 2nd in front of the United Nations demand, including but not limited to protection, the return and enforcement of our Hebrew Israelite identity, demand our land back that has been stolen from us in Israel, according to prophecy of Joel chapter 3, verse 2, in which the Most High says, I will also gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them there for my people, and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, which he shall do through his people on April the 2nd. 
Demand our silver and gold stolen from the Most High's holy temple and owed to us for murder and for free labor, according to Joel chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 prophecy, which says, Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it unto your temples, my goodly pleasant things, the children also of Judah, meaning the ones that came here from the transatlantic slave trade, according to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their borders. I, you know, you can't get no farther than uh, the, you know, uh, America. Well, how far is he talking? <laughs> That's the far as you could go. Said our people, we go in there also to demand that our people be set free. They were convicted through fraud. And I'm talking about the ones that are in prison and the ones that are being convicted at uh, currently. I'm talking about going to jail and false identity according to prophecy of Isaiah. The spirit is of the, of the Most High, Ahia, is upon me because the Most High has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the openings of the prisons to them that are bound. And to be exited to our own land, free without passports, with our silver and our gold, according to prophecy of Isaiah chapter 60, verse 8 through 9, which says, who are these that fly? Listen to this. You know, this is, this is uh, verse 8. It says, who are these that fly? Did you see, the Most High was telling, uh, Isaiah was given, given prophecy. He was given future prophecy to the people who knew nothing about airplanes. But this is, this is prophecy. This is prophecy. This is a cold being broken right here. Who are these that fly? Mean an airplane. As a cloud, mean an airplane. As a, the doves, and as the doves, which does fly to their windows, meaning their land. Now, now we get to verse 9 of uh, Isaiah chapter 60, and it says this. Surely the owl shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish. Now, the ships of Tarshish, see, we shall be uh, uh, exited by ship or by plane. Now, we can't reach the ships of Tarshish, so, so verse 8 got to be talking about us over here from far away. That's how we're going to be delivered. That's how we're going to be exited. That's how we want to be exited. That we we want to go home. So that's the only way we're going to go home if the, ship, the ships of Tarshish are not coming to America. But there's our, there are planes here. So, you know, many people say that, well, if you can't reach the ships of Tarshish, you you out of luck. Well, you know, they, they totally skipped over verse 8 of Isaiah prophecy. See, they, they didn't break that down. But let me read it to you once one, one more time. Who are these that fly as a cloud and, of, and as the doves to their windows? See, only way you could fly as a cloud and the doves is through an airplane. <laughs> so... Let, let, let me finish verse 9. Surely the owl shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold. So, you know, when, 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 when we have a true exodus, second exodus, that means that you got to leave with your silver and gold uh, promised to us. Even in, in uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 through 15, uh, thir I mean, 13 verses, uh, 13 verses, uh, 13, verse 13, verses 14, it says that we shall leave here with great substance after our 400-year captivity. So uh, the second exodus means that we, every exodus that, that we left during captivity, we left with silver and gold. We must leave with silver and gold. You know why? Because the temple of the Most High must be rebuilt. The temple on Zion must be rebuilt. And we're not we're not just counting uh, uh, talking about our reparations, but the most main important thing is rebuilding the temple of uh, of David on Zion, Mount Zion. But don't get me wrong; they owe us for for the murder of our people that came over here on the ships that they tossed over into the ocean. They owe us for their free labor that they gave them, and they owe us right now for the murder of our people they murder in currently and also for the free labor we given them because these this paper paper stuff they giving us ain't nothing but promissory notes to pay us true money at a later date what is true money 
Paper does have doesn't doesn't carry any substance nor value. So what is true money? True money is silver and gold. And we want to cash in on, on, on what they owe us. Everything that they're doing is, is, is through fraud. So, uh, and so, you know, uh, that's all I really have to say right now, brothers and sisters. So we're, we're going to open it up uh, for questioning uh, for so everybody can ask questions or anything like that. But I what but I want what I really want you to to do is stay focused on on Exodus because it's that time. You all see the signs of, of what's happening, what's going on. You got Russia shaking hands with Iran. That's prophecy. You you got um, uh, China building up its military might. You got uh, all kinds of military equipment. Uh, rolling around on trains here in the United States, they build enough for something. They, and you know about the FEMA, FEMA camps. You know about the FEMA camp, uh, coffins. So all of you who claim that you're waiting on the Mishiach to come and get you, can you tell someone the time that, they, that he's supposed to come and pick you up? But I tell you what, the Mosai does nothing without uh, uh, give, uh, pr- um, revealing the secrets to his prophets. That's Amos. That's under Amos. I can't think of the uh, the scripture, but that's Amos. But anyway, he does nothing without revealing his secrets unto his prophets. And his secret is this: Genesis chapter fifteen, verses thirteen to fourteen, gives you a uh, 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 give us a uh, uh, a time, some kind of uh, frame uh, to look forward to, from the time that we came over here on the transatlantic slave uh, during the transatlantic slave trade on the ships. And when, when the first slave came to uh, Jamestown, uh, Jamestown, Virginia, um, in 1619. Well, I'm not saying that we have to go totally off of their calendar, but hey, you know, uh, 1619 and 2019 equals 400 years, but um, it may be sooner. With that having been said, we'll go ahead and open up the uh, the, the lines for uh, comments. And I give all praise to the Most High, Ahayah Be'ashim, Yeshayah HaMessiah, and Ruach, Ha Holy Spirit. May His will be done. Take it over, brother. All praise, all praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. Uh, we're going to let some people have uh, questions. First, I'd like to read something out of Black's Law Dictionary, 1957, fourth edition. It says, a corporation is a citizen of state under whose law created and a non-resident every other state. So I'm letting you know that the citizens of this country are a corporation of their respective states. So the brother has talked about having jurisdiction over your own name, letting it benefit you, but not harming you. These things can be done on an individual basis, but in strength and in numbers, as in us gathering as a people, it has more credibility. It has more weight. You got to understand that you are in control of your person. You are in control of the entity or by your government, a social security name or a birth certificate, and that the law under citizenship or as a citizen actually looks at you as a corporation of your respective state. Here we are as sovereign people or free peoples, as it says inside the Bible. I know we all understand the Bible, so let's go to James chapter 2, verse 12. And I talked to, talked to you this, about this the other day, I, but I want to read it out of the um, Scriptures version. I know a lot of us read the Scriptures. So go to James chapter 2, and we're going to go to verse 8. And I'm, in, I'm going to read it in the King James, but I'm also going to read it inside the Scriptures edition, which is a Hebraic edition of the Bible. James 2 and 8, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Now we're going to read it inside the scripture, 1998 edition. It says, if you truly accomplish the sovereign law according to the scripture, ye shall love your neighbor as yourself, ye do well. So according to the scripture, the royal law is the sovereign law because we be free men. Of the nation is we be free because we are the ones for which the world was created or the earth was created and you can go to the book of second Ezra, and, it, and it, it tells you that so for us to keep the royal law the sovereign law 
we're only going back to the common law that was given to our people, the Bible, or uh, so-called was supposedly based on and it is represented as a sovereign law according to the scripture. But because we have fallen into the bureaucracy of the United States, we are now operating as corporations within this particular uh, construct. And we have forfeited, as in when we went to earlier, it says, uh, Cessio, we have turned over what would be the, ro- the, the royal law or the sovereign law in place of so-called citizen or citizenship within your respective state, making you a corporation and not let, a free man. Let, let me say something. To, to, let, me, let me say something for, in regards to the corporation, Ox, and in regards right. to that document. That document, if you notice that the people that have already signed that document and uploaded it to, to Facebook, you'll notice I said that they have taken control. They are the beneficiary of their corporation uh, uh, government name. They, they, they have taken control of that name. That means that any benefit that comes to that name goes to them. You know, they, 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 uh, the, the, the government name is responsible for anything that happens not not the individual who who's the beneficiary. So you benefit through that gov- uh, that government name, and and you you uh, claim no uh, no uh, no uh, no kind of charges that comes with that. That they can't charge you yourself individually. So it, it's 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 a powerful document. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. With this being a de facto society, which is a fake society, it also has created de facto citizens which means that they have actually given you a fraudulent person to represent yourself, but you're giving them your real person <laughs> as the person who receives whatever um, judgment or um, I don't know the right word I'm looking for, but you're using a free man, which that's what you're supposed to represent, particularly for our people being sovereign Hebrew Israelites, and you're actually using your free man in the place of your straw man. So when you go to jail and different things happen to you, you say, hey, listen, I'm going to be my straw man and not recognize your straw man as defective the same way as the, the government is defective. It's a false government. You're, 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 you're giving over your sovereignty, false establishment. Now, I know it's like easier said than done, but the easiest way for us as a nation to counteract these things is to stand as a nation. If we stand as a nation, we can stand on common law. We can stand on the sovereignty of our Hebrew Israelite national status. If we don't do that, then we're just going to be like a people running uphill, and you have a boulder running, ruling down. The obstacle is going to constantly be hard because we don't have the defense within each other. It's a prime example. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and brother, we was talking about this earlier when we was in the scriptures. Do you recall? 1 Corinthians yeah, chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? So our, even Paul is saying, hey, listen, you have, you have grace within your, your groups. You have grace within being the national or the individual or the person that you are. You're actually having grace and favor with, amongst the congregation or assembly. So Paul says, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within so we're supposed to stay within the body of Hamashiach. We're supposed to stay within the body of our true nationality. It says, but Elohim judges those who are outside. So once you're cast outside of the assembly, then you become subject to judgment of the world. And those who are judged in the world get the recompense and condemnation of the Most High. It says, and put away that wicked person or wicked one from among you. So we have we have sanctuary amongst our own. We have sanctuary amongst our own laws and, and rules and commandments that the Most High has given to us. Is when we start to operate without the infrastructure of, of the body of our people. That's when we start to encounter a lot of these stresses and a lot of the problems. Legal, that can legal, legal. That's right. Legally, we want to get out of legal. We want to be lawful, lawfully. So we have lawful assembly amongst each other. We we can operate as sovereign peoples as according to our laws. And whether you believe it or not, in 1983, that was termed the year of uh, of God in a sense in America that 
they acknowledged that the Bible was the word of God in 1983. So it, what was the, it was the year the word of God, uh, if I'm saying that right. But Congress said that the Bible was the word of God. So the laws and the sovereignty that it, that it extends to its own people, Congress actually agreed with that for one year. I know we were a long way away from 1983, but that is actually on the books. That is actually on your law books that the, the United States ruled in 1983 that the Bible was the word of God. So when you go into a courtroom and they say, hey, listen, you can't beat your kid. And you say, hey, well, listen, I, the Bible instructs me to rear my kid a certain way. You can go back to that and say, hey, even within the, the courts of the United States, it was ruled that the Bible is the word of God. So you can't infringe on my religious belief. You can't make me work on the, the Sabbath day. This is this is a judgment was given, and the Most High has these things happen for our benefit. So we're going to go to the callers, uh, 513-383. Mr. Points you out specifically needs me to open up. Three, three, three. What's going on? Well, we hope everybody's not going to reach out, not to our kids. Where you calling out of? Where you know? There you go. Three three zero area code. We're gonna get somebody on. Right? Area code five one three four one seven. You on the mic? Area code five one three four one seven. Come on, people. This is about human education. You know, don't be don't be a quiet spectator. All right. Call it three three six nine three five. Where you calling out of? Call it three three six area code nine three five. We're gonna get we're gonna get somebody who's gonna stand up and speak on their own behalf regarding our people. One thing people have to understand is that we have a voice. We have a voice every day we deal in this outside world. And when it comes to things pertaining to our people, a lot of times the only time we speak out is when it's coming to division, when we're debutting or rebutting people. Now April second is coming up very, very soon. And for a lot of you don't understand is that nothing has ever changed from the beginning, always had a part to play in their salvation. Now, are we a bunch of cats or are we a bunch of lions? Now, we need Judah, we need the tribes to stand up. Call it, 202-774. Are you going to speak? Shalom, shalom, my brother. Shalom, shalom. How you doing, brother? Uh, this is Kendall Black. I just What's wanted to mind, say brother? that uh, I just wanted to say that it's beautiful what has taken place, um, um, and the reality is that, and I say it, and I'll say it again, that this is not a dress rehearsal. The act and the dress rehearsals are over, and the fact of the matter is, I AI is putting and placing people in certain roles to to lay the foundation of our own deliverance. And I believe that it's important for us to truly be united as one with one mind and one purpose. And as I said before, each person has a different part in the plan and it is our responsibility for those who are of faith to play their part, whether it's in financial support, whether it is providing food for those who are in uh, New York at the United Nations, putting the council together to support the supply chain to sustain those, or working with other camps in order to come together as a nation. 
And, and that's exactly what I have been doing. That's exact, exactly what uh, I, I have been moving me to do. And I was on a previous conference with a group called United Nation of Israel. And I was glad and elated to hear. Now we've heard of them. Glad and elated to hear their their development and their platform in which to educate, to train the people of God. So I am excited. I would like to continue to work with my brother and all the brothers who are going to be marching um, in New York. I, I myself plan to be there and supporting uh, the group. Uh, I'll, I'll get my phone number. I'm trying to put the council together. That will be focusing on the supply to sustain our brothers that are going to be out in New York. And, uh, you know, hit me up on Facebook, K-L-O-E, black. There's not many out there, so I'll be an easy find. And uh, and if you're interested in working with me uh, to put the council together to network you know, our brothers in New York to make sure that those who yeah, come give me, to give the me, city. Give me your name. Give me your name again, my brother, so I can um, put that in. I can look you up right now. That way uh, you don't have to get off the call. I've been, I've, been, I've been in contact with this brother. We've been working together, brother. You right? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right, and, and I just, just put my side. phone number out there. My phone number is 202 Hey, hey, listen, we can see your phone. Yo, we can see okay, your phone okay. number, so you don't got to put it out there. All right, great, great. great. Well, anyway, anyway, I just appreciate this message. I was very moved by the, by the presentation, and I appreciate it because I think it's important to hear it and hear it again over and over, chewing it like cuss until it becomes a part of us, that we too can communicate the vision to any brother that we see and let them know that we are the true people of Aelia and that it is time to reclaim our identity so we can move forward and fulfill that which is written. So thank you for that. Brother, no no problem, brother. Um, What's your name again, brother? Kalo, Kalo Black. Kalo, I got you, brother. And one thing I like to say about not, and I'm glad you that you did call in, and and you're re- you're actually um, encouraging to my own spirit. And I'm sure it's for the brother as well. Is that one thing our people are not understanding, and I think they do understand it is this: whether you go on YouTube, Facebook, How Talk, Skype. If you're out there proclaiming that this is our nationality, you're proclaiming that those who are in the land are false, all you're doing is doing the same thing we're doing, but you're doing it as safe as possible. And the thing is, is this. The message is still the same. Every person in our history who ever was delivered had to play a part, an active part, a physical part, you know, an action part in our deliverance. There is not one time in Scripture that the Most High allowed a man, woman, a child to stay within their own home, and he sent a ship to pick them up. Every time it was a show in endurance. Every time it was a show in faith. And at this time that is crucial, which is Jacob's trouble, we're going to have to do the same thing again. We're going to have to stand up. We're going to have to have that show of faith that the Most High is going to deliver us. Things happen within the course of a man's life, and everybody wants the Most High to intervene with prophecy to deliver it. And that's not that's not going to happen. The Most High is going to move in our favor, but we have to be moving. So if anybody wanted to go to script regarding these things, the brother, Ak, Akis Raras, myself, or anybody affiliated with the work that the Most High has given us to do can answer all their questions. The Most High has not given us a, a, a split tongue regarding these things. But our people have to understand that these things have to be done together. We're going to open up the book of Joshua real quick, brother, and we thank you for calling in. We're going to go to the next call in a second. But we're going to go to the book of Joshua because Moses and Aaron, they did the same thing. And I'm not saying that I'm Moses or he's Moses or I'm Aaron or anything. 
It has nothing to do with that. We refer to the scriptures to give an accurate account of things that happened with our fathers. That's why the scripture says, refer to the things of your fathers and it will give you honor in the everlasting name. And that's the book of uh, Maccabees. So we have to look back at the things of our fathers. We're going to go into the book of Joshua real quick, and I believe it's chapter 80, verses 37 and 38. Is it chapter 80, 80 brothers, or 81? Book of Jasher, chapter 80. Oh, oh, you, oh which, which one are you talking about? I mean, or what is it pertaining to? 80 or 81? Which, which one? Uh, the one where um, the people died because 80 hardly unto uh, Moses and Aaron. And like I said, we're in no way Moses and Aaron, but we have to refer to the scriptures to show you what happens when our people don't move when it's time to move. You know, we have to stand up for our nationality, and brothers who say we shouldn't do that need to stop going on Power Club. They need to stop going on YouTube. They need to stop hitting the street corner. If you're doing exactly what we're doing, only the, the fact is that we have to go to those who actually affect whether we'll be here or not. And we have thousands of brothers and sisters that's inside the land as we speak today. We're going to go to the book of Jasher, uh, I believe chapter 80. Let me go to that real quick. Joshua chapter 80. If you have the book of Joshua, you can download the PDF. Oh, that's chapter, uh, <laughs> Joshua chapter 80, verse, verses 36 and 37, Ock. 36 and 37. Uh, 37. Joshua chapter 80, verses 36 and 37. And God sent darkness upon Egypt, that the whole land of Egypt and Patro became dark for three days, so that man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth. And that time died many of the people of Israel who had rebelled against the Lord, and who were not hearkened to Moses and Aaron, and believed not in them that God had sent them. Yo, we're not the only ones God has sent. You got brothers on the street corner right now telling you to come out of my people. Some of them believe that it's only mentally. Some speak as if it's physically. We're saying it's both mentally and physically. So the message we're given is not an exclusive message that, we're, that we've been sent to do. Other brothers are saying the same thing. So the scripture says, flee from her, come out of the midst of her, my people, that you be not a part of her plagues. When we leave here, if you're still here, the Most High is not going to cease from having the nation shoot its arrows at this place. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. So many of our people died because they didn't hearken to the messengers. And like the scripture says, which everybody quotes, we have to come out of the midst of her, my people. And it's not just talking about mentally. Because when you go into the book of Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, it says, stay not still. Jeremiah chapter 51, I believe, verse 50. Don't go to that real quick. The scripture is why the is saying stay still. The scripture is saying stay not still. So when the most high raised up the hands of Chaldeans, and if you talk about Iran, they've just had a military pact with Russia. So the Christian doctrine says, no, it's going to be Russia and China that moves against America. But looking at it, looking at uh, the political case right now, it's not China and Russia that's moved together. It's actually Russia and Iran. Jeremiah chapter oh, yeah, 31. and uh, Zechariah Zachariah chapter 13, verse 8, uh, is a parallel to uh, Jasher, verses um, 80, I mean, chapter 80, verses 36 and through 37. And this, and uh, I, I just want to put that Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 out there. And it says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Most High, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be uh, left therein. So if, if you if you compare that to uh, Jasher, uh, what he just read in Jasher chapter eighty, verses thirty six through thirty seven, you can see the uh, parallel to each other. You see uh, them coincide with each other. That that uh, that uh, what has been should be once more. And uh, to go along with that, we're going to look at Jeremiah fifty one verse forty five. It says, "My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul." From the fierce anger of the Lord or the Most High. So the Most High says, Go you out of the midst of it. The same thing it says in Revelation. Jeremiah 51 and 50 says, We are confined. No, I'm sorry, 51 and 50. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. 
Remember the Lord afar off and let Jerusalem come into your mind. So let me get to if, if looking at the understanding, if the Most High is the one who comes gets us, why is he saying remember the Lord afar off? We have to deliver ourselves from the sword in the heart of Pharaoh, the same way he did in uh in Egypt. In the heart of uh King Cyrus or his son Darius, the same way he did in Persia, to allow the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, moved by Ezra and Nehemiah to return home and build the set the set apart land in the uh the Kadash places. The same way now we're receiving that mercy if you look at the civil rights movement, that these so called Gentiles are actually trying to fight for our rights within this construct. So we have the same things happening over again. Let's go to the next call. Let's see what the next call has to say. Uh, 202 Is that the brother we just had on? Brother, I just wanted to say that Three four seven eight three three. Where you calling from? Yo, shalom, shalom. What's going on, brother King? I just you, brother. Good, good, man. I just, I just recently got in. I'm on, a, I'm on a train, um, and was just listening in, man. And, and um, you know, we, we, you know, we'll definitely support you, brothers, when you get out there, man. We're gonna pray for you, and everything that the Most High, you know, move you and do it to do His will, man, for sure. Um, I, I didn't, I, I didn't get everything because I came on late. I'm just. This actually coming from um, um, the gym and everything. So I was up on the train waiting on that. I was calling and listening in. And I was leaving the gym. So uh, I'm just going to be listening in, man. And like again, you know, we're going to be fasting and praying out there in Israel. You know, on your brother's behalf, man. And, uh, well, brother, we're going to be praying for you as well. We know you're going to be in Mount Zion. And we're going to be praying for our brothers there. Because a lot of people don't know. That is it's just not us operating within the United States, but that we have brothers that we love dearly who are going to Mount Zion to pray to the Most High. And that while we're here in Babylon, in this, or in this land, or in our captivity, at the UN, that we have a brother, or our brother is going to be in Mount Zion praying and supplicating to the Most High. And this is during the Passover, and this is a very crucial time. And a lot of our deliverances have been, been during the Passover. So most definitely, we're gonna we gonna we gonna be we gonna be out there supporting you guys with prayer, man. You know, as our as our kids, man, we supposed to love and, and 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 support each other when you know when we when they find and they, they attempt to do the commandments of the Most High. So you know, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of our people don't know what's really going on these days. They don't really truly understand. Um, that the Most High is really preparing his people to go back to his homeland. But the most important thing, man, is, is that, you know, that our people work on one accord, at least try to, you know what I mean? Um, that's important, man. You know what I mean? Love. And if anybody know me, I'm about love, man, you know. And uh, love kills all demons, for sure. Uh, you know? uh. So, you know, we'll always be going out there in love and humbleness and, and in peace. You know what I mean? The nation, the scripture talks about how the nation is going to, is going to uh, uh, feel sorry for it. So, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, because of what's being done to it, you can kind of see that now. So, yeah. we'll always be First going out there in meekness. Absolutely. So long as we're going out there in meekness and humbleness, you know what I mean? We're doing the will of, of, of our man on the most high. So I just got to so I'm not going to keep you guys, man. Um, so right, I just wanted to let you know that, we, you know, we, while y'all out there, we're going to be supporting y'all with our prayers, man, up, on, on my design, for sure. No, no doubt, brother. Um, shalom, shalom, brother. We're going to go to the next call. Sure. My brother, six four six six three two. Chime in. Uh, 
Uh, area code two six nine seven five nine. Uh, well, we some of the callers, I guess they couldn't uh, then chime in, but we don't want brothers to be shy when they call in because this is this is a uh, family effort. This is a nation, national effort on behalf of our people. Um, I want to read uh, going to the book Second Evidence, and I want us to really take and, and take take heed to what's being said now. Ezra was real heavy, and uh, the messenger of the Most High came to him. And I want y'all to look at what it said. Ezra, second Ezra chapter 7. Brother Ock, I'm going to mute your mic real quick, brother, because you bring a lot of feedback. And when you're ready to talk, I'm going to let you in. Second Ezra chapter 7. It says, If this city now, now it's talking about a person who has an inheritance, that you have to go over a long road to. It says, if this city now were given into a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sake I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the decree that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travel. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. So Jacob's trouble goes hand in hand with this life period to Israel. This life is very hard. It's it's full of temptations. It's full of perils. It's full of evil. It's full of pain. But these are the situations where the Most High proves us by our faith. This is the situations why, where we're refined as gold through the furnace of adversity. It says, for the entrances of the elder world were wide and short and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. So now, therefore, why despise thyself, saying thou art but a corruptible man? And why art thou moved, whereas thou art but a mortal? Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come, rather than that which is present? So we have to think about the kingdom that's coming, that great kingdom, that perfect kingdom, where we'll be in the position of the servants of the Most High, where we'll be in the position where we're the the nation that is leading the world. When we're sitting beside our king and master, Yeshaya HaMashiach, we have to think about that world. We have to labor to go into that rest. So we have to endure all the labors and trials that come with this world. That's the only way we're going to get to our inheritance. Let's go back to the start of the beginning. It says, And when I had made it, speaking these words, there was sent unto me an angel, which had not sent, had been sent unto me, the nights before. Now, this is Second Ezra chapter 7. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am going to tell you. And I said, Speak on my God. Then said he unto me, The city is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put, but put the tents that entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it if he went not through the narrow? How could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. A city is built and is set upon a broad scale and is full of all good things. The entrance there are the devil and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if, it, if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep one. And one only path to take the home. Even in between the fire and the water, so small that they could one man go there once. If this city is not working, if he never shall pass the danger set before, how shall we receive this inheritance? Us getting home and being restored is like unto this parable. We have to go up that long road. We have to go up that narrow road just to get to to get home, to get into our inheritance. And it is dangerous. It is dangerous going to the White House. It is dangerous going to the Capitol. It is dangerous going to the UN. It is dangerous on the street corners. It is dangerous teaching the truth, period. 
But we have to take that road to get to our inheritance. The Most High is not going to bring our inheritance to us. The New Jerusalem is not going to set down in America. The New Jerusalem is going to be in a place where we have to go to it. We have to face the mind. We have to, we have to face the danger and the fear of standing in front of the pharaohs of the world. And we're going to start that, or we're going to have a part of that that's going to be being at the UN April 2nd. I see my door. Yeah, well, what is it? I, what, what, what is it? No, no. Did you have anything else you want to say to the people? No, uh, yeah. They, actually, I just, I just want to, to tell them to, um, to download the document, sign it, print the name at the top, sign it at the bottom, uh, post it to, to, uh, to Facebook. To show that uh, you're you're um, you're in support of your nation, and let's uh, let's head to uh, the United Nations with our flag and with the United States flag, and amongst the the United Nations flags, and let's um, declare our nationality like we want to. Let's enforce it like we're supposed to be, and that's 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 about it. All I have to say, I, you know, let's go forward. Let's make this happen. The Most High is with us. It's that time, and uh, we see we see the signs. We see everything that's happening. We see uh, Russia uh, shaking hands with Iran, and uh, that's prophecy. Says that uh, I will stir. Uh, the Most High said he will stir up the the Medes, which is Iran, and it's taking place. They uh, you you see every everything is happening. Everything is on on point. Everything is happening. It's all spiritual. You know, we we doing what we're so, supposed to do. Let's let's go forward. All right, so we we we're going to conclude this show. Um, we're going to put some announcements out when the next show is going to be. Uh, we're going to start doing them more frequently as time approaches, because you know we have uh, time is very short. So we need our people to be of one mind and one spirit. And any fear you might have, you need to get it out your system, because we have a we have faith in a God. If you if you use that word or Allah Hayyim, that no man can stand up against, no man can deliver can deliver himself out of the hand of the Most High. And if we stand there being sons and daughters of the Most High, we truly have nothing to wor worry about. So with that being said, shalom shalom. The announcement we put out, the announcements will be put out soon regarding the next the next broadcast. And all praise to the Most High, Baraka Ahaya, by Hashem Yeshaya. Kwam Yashra'el, Barak of Israel. Shalom. Shalom.